interesting stuff in the garage I want to show you. Heidi's been working on, actually. Everybody, just a quick update on the 32 Carrera project here. I'm sorry, things have been kind of running a little bit slow, but we've been doing a lot of work in the background. And so it takes a lot of planning to get this project done. We have to work with vendors. We have to work with a lot of other things and try and figure out who's going to do what and how we're going to do it. So I want to run you through where we are at this point. We're getting very close to actually pulling the engine out of the car. So it's going to be super fun. I've got some interesting stuff in the garage I want to show you. Heidi's been working on actually. So these are a couple of things that we've been working on for the car here. This is our engine stand. So Heidi hooked up with some people, uh, some friends in the PCA and found this guy here. So it's two pieces actually. It's this big thing that comes out. And this is the yoke that you mount on the back where the transmission mounts to the back of the engine. And they have it interesting, you know, the, car, the engines are split in half. So the yoke sits like this so that you could then crack the engine apart if you wanted to. I don't think we're gonna have to get that far, but that's the way these things are designed. And then they just kind of go in here like this and you can turn them, which is kind of cool. So you can turn the engine 90 degrees and repin it. This is a 750 pound engine stand and this guy will handle easily. I know that the previous owner of this rebuilt a 911 engine on this and that was kind of one of our criteria. I know it'll work for a 356, but they don't weigh anything. The 911 engine's pretty heavy, uh, 400 something pounds. I mean, they're pretty darn heavy. Over here we have our motorcycle lift. Now this is just a kind of a cheapy, kind of simple motorcycle lift, but it works really well. So you can lock it. See this, isn't this kind of cool? So this works great. And these two rails on here are perfect for a 356. But we're gonna get underneath the engine in a minute and I wanna show you how, uh, try to figure out how we're going to adapt this to work really well for a 911 engine. The 911 engine has a pretty tough spine in it and then we've got, we've got heat exchangers under there that we don't wanna set the engine on. So I think this is gonna be a good start but I think I need to build a bit of a cradle for the engine underneath. So at any rate, so we've got this. This is gonna be pretty sweet. Also, I have this. So Wayne Dempsey put together this really, really cool book from Pelican Parts. And he's the guy who started Pelican Parts. Super duper smart guy. This guy graduated from MIT. He's an engineer. Super interesting guy. But he has a complete step, multi-step process on pulling the engine out of the car. We've got a full step-by-step -step here. One, two, three. All the different steps you'll need to remove the engine. So this is really going to be my playbook for this car. I think it's going to be a great way, great place to start. I've also been doing a lot of reading online and all that sort of stuff. This is great, actually. It's so nice to have this already all done. If, you're, if you've got a BMW or a Porsche and you haven't seen these manuals, he has newer ones for the 996 series, for the Boxsters, and for BMWs as well. This is a really cool resource here. We also have um, Heidi managed to pick one of these things up. If you've ever pulled one of these engines out and kind of look, you probably know what this is. It's a flywheel lock. These things are great. You just put it through a hole, one of these holes on the other side here. It locks on like this to the, to the flywheel. There's teeth underneath here and this locks it down so that you can put some torque on the engine and actually get the uh, bolts off. All right, so that's that. In addition to all of this, these big, huge jack stands down here. So these are much bigger. So they go really, really high. And that's going to be very important. And the reason why these, it's going to be really important is because in order to get the engine out from underneath the car, we're going to have to lift the car up almost two feet. And that is going to be quite a feat. So let's talk about that a little bit. We'll move back to the car. So in a 911, there's a carryover that actually comes from, I think it comes from the Beatles actually. It's on 356s as well. There's a receiver here for the jack itself. So if you're going to jack up the car, there's a receiver here and you would put the, uh, the little snout from the jack in there and that's how you would jack up the car. Now we need to raise this car two feet above the engine. That's a lot. That's a huge amount. So the only way I I can think of to do that really safely, it's kind of hard, there's really no real jack points on these older cars, is to put something in here and lift it either with a series of on each side using jacks and then those big jack stands, or I had a thought, we can buy these uh, 
these extrusions that go into this and have a pad on them. They're designed specifically so you can use a regular jack. You just plug them in and you just use a regular jack to jack up the car. Now, if I was, if those things are sticking out, I might be able to put a hook on them and wrap a chain around the actual rail here on the lift and use the lift to raise the car. Of course, the car would be on the ground and the car has to be on the ground. I'm gonna go over that in a minute. Uh, we've got those parts on order, so they'll be here uh, soon enough. And that's what I was talking about. There's just a bunch of parts that need to be procured and stuff we have to think about and kind of plan through before we do this. Now, another thing is, of course, I'm not doing this alone. There's no way, it'd be super scary. So Heidi, who is behind the camera right now, will probably be doing most of the filming, which is great, but I need an uh, additional helper. So we're gonna, we're gonna throw in a ringer. You remember our friend Doug, he's been in lots of videos and things, but Doug is going to stop by when we eventually do pull this thing out. About 10 hours of work to pull these things out and help me with the actual lowering of the engine so that we can be safe about this as well. So it's kind of a big thing, a lot of, a lot of planning, a lot of stuff we have to kind to get through so that's why this is moving a little bit slowly up front super sorry about that but I want to show you some stuff we're gonna go under the engine and I want you to get a kind of a visual of what we're dealing with under there all right so underneath here we've got two big bits we've got the engine this is always hard to kind of wrap your head around but this is actually the engine in the back and then forward here this kind of brown kind of crusty bit here this is the transmission so it's about from here to back here. So we've got four mounts. We've got two mounts in the front here, and then you can't see them, but there's two additional mounts. All right, so here's the big problem, is that if you take a look at the lift here, and look at this distance here between these, these rails here, this distance here is about 31 inches or so, and this engine needs at least 36, more like closer to 38 really, to drop straight down. So that's the problem with a four post lift. That's why we can't actually have the car on the lift when we drop it because we'll have nowhere to go. So that's kind of a problem. And then this back bar here, this guy here is gonna be in the way of the lifts and things too. It's kind of a, it's, it, it kind of makes it a little bit challenging in order to get the engine out of this car. I've never heard about people actually using the back of the lift to drop the engine. That's true. So that, that brings up a really good point. Thanks, Heidi. Um, is that you can do this one of two ways. You can either pull just the engine out of the car by literally separating it from the transmission, pulling its engine mounts and sliding it backwards. Usually I have to take the back valence and bumper off and such, but you can pull the engine out and drop it down. That's one way to do it. Or you can do it together. And if you do it together, you pull the engine and transmission together as one piece and the entire thing slides back down. So what Heidi was talking about is if you were to roll the car to where the rear wheels are right at the edge of the lift here, you can then have enough space because we know that the wheels actually here are centered with the transaxle in the in the transmission. So everything behind it would be hanging off the end of the lift. You can put a jack under it and you can drop it down. It's still a little bit of kind of get it down and pull it back a bit. So it's still a little bit complicated, but we still need to get the transmission out. Cause remember our real reason for doing this mostly is transmission related, not engine related. The work we're gonna be doing on the engine is gonna be mostly just the top end on the engine just because we'll have it out, why not, right? But we've got some rumbling and some issues in the transmission, so that's gonna be our biggest focus, I think. But at any rate, so if you're gonna take them both out, it's easier, it's actually a little bit easier to take them both together and drop them straight down. Take a look at this as well. These guys here, which don't look very strong, are not very strong. These are the heat exchangers for the uh, heating system on the car. So we've got exhaust manifolds that are coming down from the cylinders here and they're flowing through this, the exhaust is coming out, and air flows through these for the heating system, which is great, but it looks like this would make a wonderful platform to set the engine on, doesn't it? I mean, they're nice and flat and perfect and everything. The problem is they can't really take the weight. They're just, you know, they're just pressed steel. So I think what you're gonna do is deform them and break them. Believe it or not, and this is a very strange thing about these engines, is that this spine here on the engine where the case comes together is the strongest point on the engine. And you can literally jack up the back of the car 
by putting a nice soft pad on that and lifting right here. So that is where we need to set our force when we're lifting the engine and dropping it down. That's what we need to be centered on, but it's all rocky and all weird and we can't put much on the actual case around it. It has to be on the spine. We've got a hard point there, a hard point there and a hard point here as well. So you remember our motorcycle lift over there that we're gonna to use to drop the engine down has those two pads. Those pads are going to sit right about here-ish. We could rotate it this way and maybe go this way and maybe hit this guy and a couple of things here. But I think what I'm gonna end up having to do is build a little bit of a wooden cradle for it just so that I make sure that I transfer the loads directly to the hard points on the bottom of the engine and not mess up any of the exhaust system. You're probably thinking, well, you have to take the exhaust system off anyways. Why don't you take the exhaust system off the car? Wouldn't that make it easier? It might, but it's not like there's something underneath there I can use instead of the exhaust system. I still would have the cylinders. I'm certainly not putting any weight on them. So I'm not really certain that's gonna buy us a huge amount. And also these are nice and flat. And if the engine was to rock a little bit, I could put towels underneath them to sort of help stabilize it. And it might actually give us a little more stability I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. These are the sorts of things that I've been thinking about. I'm, 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 every night I'm up here looking at this going, hmm, how am I going to do this? So this is kind of interesting. If you've got questions, comments, if you've got any thoughts, go ahead and, and uh, put, the, put them in the comments down below. That would be super helpful because I have never done this before. This is the first time for me. I've had the engine out on the 356 several times. It's actually quite easy. But this is quite a bit more complicated and we're pulling the transmission as well. We've got to remove our sway bar here. We've got a lot of electrical connections, fuel connections, fuel, uh, the throttle linkages, all that sort of stuff has to be disconnected. Heating system, wherever it goes into the car, it's up there somewhere. We have to take all that stuff off. So I'm going to spend like a week or so just kind of disconnecting crap on here. We've got to empty the gas tank, all sorts of stuff, and then we'll get it prepped. I'll help bring Doug in and we'll go ahead and figure out an interesting way to drop it. And like I said, I think my current thinking is to have the car off the lift on the ground and use the lift to raise the car up once we get the engine completely on the ground. We'll slide it backwards, lift the car up, slide the whole shoot and match back. Then we separate the, the engine and transmission. The transmission's not all that heavy. It's about 130 or 40 pounds, so it's not that bad. And then we have to get the engine back up onto the yoke that I showed you before. So we have to mount that on the yoke. My little motorcycle jack is not going to be quite high enough to get it up on the yoke. So we might actually even use the lift to raise the engine up and then we can slide, mount the yoke to it, slide it into the engine stand and then lower it back down and we should be good, maybe? I don't know. These are sort of things I've been thinking. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or any ideas of things that I've kind of missed or I've just kind of blown off, please let me know. I don't think you've blown them off, but we've <laughs> yeah. never done this before. We've never done this before. So this is, this is going to be new for us. It's going, to be, it's going to be really fun, really interesting. So you'll learn along with us. It's always just a matter of kind of pitting your mechanical kind of prowess against these things. This is a German car, so it's designed to come apart. That's what I love about German cars. I love the Italian cars. They go together well, but they weren't really designed to be taken back apart again. But the German cars always were. They're always designed to be maintained, and I love that about it. Um, this was just a quick update. I'm super sorry that we were, we're a little bit behind on our videos and things and I know things are kind of slowing down but it's just because we're doing so much research in the back end and we did get a kitty. Remember Zeekster, the little, the, our, our new little kitty? Well he's kind of had a little bit of a rocky start. He's been to the vet a few times and stuff. I think he's on the mend and I think he's doing much better but he's also been a little bit of a distraction for us as well but uh, he's doing much better. You can always follow him on Instagram. He has his own channel, of course, on Instagram. Of course he does, right? So, uh, yeah, it's called Ozzy and Zeke. Ozzy and Zeke. So if you're interested more in the kitty, uh, we'll have some content there as well. Well, anyways, thank you so, so much for watching. As always, a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. And we're going to get back to this very, very soon. So expect some content coming out. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that little bell next to it so you'll be notified next time we send out a video. So thanks so much for watching. And until next time, safe travels. Bye. That was really good. <laughs>